Welcome into the PHNX Sun Devil Show brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook ah! app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment wherever you get your podcast. I am Anthony Totri, joined by Sean DePaz to my right, Woo! Shane Diefenbach to my left. Boys, ah! they did it! Outside! They did it! RIP to headphone users, but my God, are you kidding me? ASU <laughs> knocking off number three UCLA. <laughs> Final score, 87-84, triple overtime, boys, the game of the century. Dude, I this feels so, so good to me especially because <sighs> how many times have I said this? I'm done with the encouraging losses, not only because I'm sick of it, but this team deserves a big win, yeah. and they got it, and they fought for it. That The story has been the first half always come out strong, the second half they fall apart. They fell apart a little bit in that second half, but not only did they play a complete game for – full 40 minutes but for three overtimes they fought and fought and fought and it was yep. guys like marion who struggled the entire year it was guys like jalen graham dj horn was having a tough night he woke up jay heath had some big plays it was everybody and it was so beautiful to watch man it was so beautiful sean what was the most exciting part of this game for you the fucking end when we won <laughs> like, are you kidding me when the buzzer sounded and they stormed the court that was the most exciting part um i mean the entire thing like it's that was the the the, the single most exciting Sun Devils basketball game I have watched. Yeah. Full stop. 100%. Especially this year. This was, it just seemed like a matter of time. We've talked about it over and over again. It was coming. At some point, they were going to put it all together. They finally got some offense to match the defense. They put up 87 points. And I get it was three overtimes, but they put up 87 points. He wants to Taco Bell. Josh wants to Taco Bell, man. Bring, bring out the fucking taco party pack. <laughs> tacos, tacos are the answer, baby. They are. They literally. So we've been on a quest to figure out which food would finally lead to ASU unlocking its pure potential, and we did it. Yep. It's tacos. Taco boys specifically. Taco boys specifically with nothing on it but meat. Yeah, no, no salsa, because I, I may or may not have fucked Vampire up. Vampire style, before. I think is what they call it. Yes, sure. Um, I may or may not have messed up and did not bring any salsa. Um, ASU loses if we have salsa tonight. ASU loses yeah. if we have salsa. I just am a god, maybe. You I did it. You did it. I think Bobby Hurley has earned a fucking meal today. He earned, has earned a lifetime contract. Bro, you, <laughs> you said that like in the third overtime. You were like, man, Bobby must be hungry. I forgot about that. I was like, damn, this motherfucker he's will go an entire about. day without eating now. Yeah, he's getting himself a party pack. You know he's celebrating. The thing that made me so happy, not only to see like – the fans being so into it, and we'll get into a couple of videos from uh, one of our guys at the game. David was there, got some great content for us. Not only that, that, but to see Bobby get fired up and start hyping up the fans. I mean, they deserve this win, yeah. and it feels so good. I, I'm not happy for – I'm happy for Sundell's fans, but I'm so stoked for this team because they deserve this win. Oh, 100%. Quick shout-out to the 942 crew. Because even when yeah. the, the fan like the fan base at large gave up on this team, the 942 crew showed the fuck up and you could feel it even though the, the stadium wasn't packed you could hear their 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 effect and how excited mm -hmm. they were and how into the game they were and that's what this team needs and that's what this team deserves especially after a fucking performance like this oh 100 we've seen it le legitimately the entire season this team banking on the fact that their defense is what keeps them in games and then throughout the season usc we've seen offensive spurts u of a we saw offensive spurts again the last time they played usc we saw offensive spurts finally finally like it clicked, and we saw literally what this team is capable of. You said before the game even started, and we made jokes about it. Like, watch out for ASU in the Pac-12 tourney. You guys made jokes about it. Uh, we made jokes about it 100%. But that is before we had finally seen what a full 40 minutes and change of ASU basketball looks like. And it looks damn offense. beautiful. It's sexy. You know why we didn't need any salsa for tonight? Because ASU's <laughs> offense brought all the damn spice. Yeah. All the DFA. spice, baby. That's all we needed. And how much no, – not only was it the defense, but it was the free throws again. They've won three games now in crunch time with free throws. Oregon, um, Creighton, and this game. And how much fucking money did Bill Walton have on UCLA? Now, My God, every time they step to the line. All and DJ them. Horn's 20 for 20. Made them both. <laughs> Marion hasn't missed in the ages. Missed one. But they fought through the curse. They – Oh, and I was going to see Kamani hit some free throws. He right, air ball right. one. Going to see Jalen Graham bank in a free throw. Your boy, though. Your boy, Mario Jackson, was Ooh. the guy of the night. Every time he hit a three, I was so fired up. I was so fired up for good reason. He deserves that, man. He deserves it. He finally did it, man. We he won this shot. game in spite of the refs sucking. They sucked both ways, but they, they sucked. They did suck both ways. But despite the commentators trying to screw us over, we – 
ASU versus the world, baby. <laughs> hey, that's what it is, man. I will stand on that mountain. This ASU team sure knows how to fight. And for a while, like, we, it, it almost felt like you were waiting. Yeah. You were waiting for the ASU moment of, oh, there it is again. Right? There it is again. Marion Jackson had a couple times where he could have ended the game. DJ Horn could have sealed the game. Sure enough, they fucking did it. Eric brings up a great point. Now ASU's got U of A back at DFA. Like, could could the story, like, leading up to that game write itself any better? No, literally no. Because not only did a- U of A lose to UCLA and then beat them today, dominated uh, – or uh, beat them two days ago or three days ago, whenever that was, but, but they looked better and they woke up. Now U of A has to come into Tempe and beat this team again – but now they're hot, and now they're ready, and now there's going to be – this place is going to be sold out. DFA is going to be sold If DFA isn't sold out, I'm going to lose my shit at <laughs> ASU fans because if this doesn't show you that you need to show out for ASU basketball games, man, if you decline an opportunity to go to this game tonight, fucking shame on you. Shame on you. I get the stuff before and how you can be disappointed with this team, but I've said it time and time again. This team is fun to watch. I tweeted earlier. Record aside, this is the most fun I've ever had covering a team – even with the devastating losses, like there's just so many storylines. No Marcus Bagley. It's just so much things to love about this team, man. Energy, man. That's what they thrive off of. That's what Bobby Hurley's teams have been known for in the past is they've thrived off of energy. And the fact of the matter is that it it wasn't just two halves. They got through three extra periods against a top three team in the entire country. And they own that third period. They own that third overtime. Sean, you got the numbers ready to go? Yes, I Let's do. Let's see what those numbers look like because there was a lot of time for both these teams to put up some good numbers. But the only number that really matters, boys, final is, score. is at 87 Woo! to 84, baby. Uh. What sticks out to you aside from the final score, Sean? Uh, the 3 OT. Um, I mean, jo- <laughs> I, I'm partially joking, but also like the fact because I don't. It's, it's we talked about it before. It's those games where they get out to hot, hot starts. They're in it for a lot of it, and then it just something happens, and it feels like oh well, this is where it falls off the rails. And it happened tonight. There was moments in this game where UCLA hit a big shot, or we something happened to ASU, and we just were like, well, this is where the game ends. And yep. they, they didn't quit. They nope. never gave up. Um, but really, it's it's the rebound numbers. I mean, we got out rebounded sixty one to forty seven, and they ASU still managed to overcome that. And we've talked again. We talked before about how they need to play a perfect game. Yep, they didn't, and nope. they still won. They still won. Their defense was incredible. I think it's a three point number that really stood out to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that one that ASU the game so many times there were huge shots from you know DJ Horn who went cold but then came alive a little bit. Obviously, Marion, um, the last shot of – dude, I don't remember what overtime period that was. Was it the first overtime where he chucked that three when yeah. he had too much, a lot of time yeah. left, or was that regulation? Was that regulation? Who knows? Regulation. <laughs> Whatever that was, everything's blurring together. Whatever that was, you know, a lot of time left. He had, definitely had at least two or three more dribbles, probably a pass in there too. I don't really hate it as much just because, one, it was good. It looked good. Yeah. It was about I an inch it. to the right. And two, you see how much confidence he has – I, I said this when we were watching the game, but how incredible is it to not only think about a guy that's been struggling from the three-point line this entire year, but a guy that just missed a game-winning three against a top three team yep. and maybe let the let his, the opportunity slip through his hands, come in and the first shot he takes in overtime is a three, and he wets it. Just amazing just from leaving him. Leaving it up there. Shoot or shoot. Um, Josh, up there. you tell your dad he can't go to an ASU game ever again. He says, my dad has gone to every single game this season, and he was in He's got to stay in Hawaii, actually. Game. He can join us for some Taco Boys. Virtually. Mm-hmm. Virtually. Hey, Lindsay. Guess what? I have some Taco Bell for you. It's it's the answer, baby. Hey, Lindsay. Sorry, but um, I'm sweating as much as Bobby Hurley right He's now. He's keeping so. that seat extra warm yeah. for you, Lindsay. Um, Res Devil, very true. Defense always, always there. there. Yep. They just need a consistent shooter. They just need one of those guys. And to- this was well, they did this. They did this tonight, and DJ Horn had an off night. Yeah, I mean that's what I was gonna say. They did this kind of in spite of an inconsistent shooter. This is what I've I've kind of been asking for, is every time that someone else disappears, someone else showed up. Every time that someone, you would see Marion take a bad shot, he, he either he would come back and make a good shot or someone else, Jalen Graham would go down low and do something like it, it was every time someone needed to get picked up, someone else on the team was there to do it. Oh. And it was it felt so good. So so many names. Who are you giving bottle service to tonight? 
Who's the player of the game tonight? I mean, it's got to be Martin. It's got to be Martin. Not even just because his performance was lights out or anything like that. It was just that when he needed to do something after all year, every time mm-hmm. this year he needed to do something and he didn't, he finally did. It just feels like he deserves this one. I'm going to surprise you a little bit with mine. Jalen Graham? Nope. Wow. Alonzo Gaffney. Really? A guy who hadn't scored, and if, if I'm remembering this right, hadn't scored in five of ASU's last six games. Yeah. And hadn't hit double figures since opening night. He knocked down two triples tonight. He did foul out at the end of, man, I don't know what overtime that was. That's uh, second. Second one? Yeah. But he, no, I third, because he won the tip in the third one. I think. He was crucial, I feel like. Not just offensively, but defensively, time and again this season, he has showed up. And I think they really, really needed him tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, a guy that deserves some bottle service. Seeing this, <laughs> I'm about to cry right now, guys. Seeing this number in on the stat sheet, printed real game over. Marion Jackson had 24, 24 points, points. Wow. Just on 7 of that. 18 shooting. Not Is that only, a season high? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He had 22, 21. I think, or 21 in the, in the game against uh, USC, the I USC, believe. Yeah. Um, but those points didn't matter. All of these did. And not only that. Every single ASU starter was in double figures. Yeah, that is beautiful. Jalen Graham was, was the only one that didn't score. Yeah, yeah. Jalen Graham didn't shoot was yeah. four assists away from a triple double. God damn! Wow. wow, sixteen, ten, and six. It was just an all around performance. Yeah, and we we talked about their potential all year. They lived up to it. They 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 did what they needed to do. I mean, this is the, we've said it. Like you're not Marion. If Martin scores 20 points, ASU is not losing. The only time that that happened and we lost, uh, the, it was the USC game yeah. when they didn't have their full team. Um, so this just feels like a long time coming, and that team deserved it. Bobby deserved it. Tosh, are you going to cow um, tipping tonight? I don't know what I'm doing tonight, dude. Things are about to get freaky at the end. Tosh, you're going, going cow tipping. Tip. It's the boots. Yes. It's the yes. So so squirrel asking, where's the blonde coming? Pending sometime later in the week. We promise it's going to happen. I'm a man of my word. I'm going cow tipping. Yes, I am. Um, The reason... Okay, you know the greatest thing about bottle service? You don't have to just give it to one person. The whole ASU team yeah, baby. is getting bottle service yeah, tonight. Baby. Bobby's it's an expensive evening. Oh, yeah. Bobby Bobby's should eat before he gets bottle yeah, service. Bobby needs to eat. <laughs> yeah, true. Things will get <laughs> rowdy at DFA if Bobby doesn't have any and food, It's already man. rowdy, so... <laughs> the, the electricity might go out again. Uh, But no, yeah, that whole team... Top to bottom, and I mean, I mean, the bench players, the crowd, like everyone was into it. Everyone played a part in that. Um, we were into it. We were into it. I think we we willed them to victory a little bit. I think the tacos, like I said, I think the tacos did it. And I'm glad. I'm glad it was the tacos because we were talking about Arby's next, and I really <laughs> no, we we're gonna <laughs> go, go tiny mini, food yeah, next. I think. I'm glad that I can eat a real big man dinner now. Feed the coach. We need a graphic about just feeding Bobby after a big win. Tacos into his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. We're, I'll work on a few, Chris. I hey, coach, Chris, I'm here for it. Crowd should be, like Shane said, crowd's got to be nuts on Monday. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. there is no reason that that game shouldn't be the loudest that DFA has been in the last two years. As a fellow ASU degenerate, look, I know you get thirsty Thursdays. You get, you know, wine Wednesdays. You ain't got nothing on a Monday. Yeah, you might sure. be hung over from your Sunday, but you ain't got nothing to do. Monday night. Huge game. You got to show out, man. You got to. I would be shocked if this place wasn't sold out. It better be. I mean, you said – so I want to get back to the game just for just yeah. for a second. <laughs> you said that the the play of the game for you really or the turning point was Marion kind of pulling up right after he had missed the game winner and then pulling up for a shot. Sean, what is your moment of the game for ASU? Um, I feel like it was those, those two back-to-back threes that they hit. Well, um, I think it was in the third overtime, right? When it was, it was Marion. They went down, fouled Bro. Yeah. on a ticky tack foul that probably shouldn't have been called in the triple overtime. And then Jay they Heath. went back, and Jay Heath hit a three. And then they fouled again, and they didn't get discouraged. They didn't let that ruin the game yeah. for them. Like yeah. they, they, I would have they, pouted. Yeah, the yeah. refs tried to, to take all of that. Well, I don't want to say the refs tried to, but <laughs> they're just the, bad refs. The, the, it was it was poorly called on both sides. Yeah, in an yeah. overtime game, you don't call it that no, close. 100%. And I get it being consistent, but the, it was inconsistent. Yeah, anyway. no, you should. That's not a call that you should make in overtime. But that's a that's a moment where in previous games you would have been like Jesus. Everything ASU is, tries to do is just not working for them, and this seems like all their momentum's gone. And it shows and it, how resilient this team yeah, can be. It, it, oh, and yeah. that, that's Bobby. That's Bobby getting these guys to play for. Him. Yeah, and this and I brought it up. Uh, I forget what overtime it was. I think it was going into the third overtime. Like 
there the so much has already been written on the wall about Bobby Hurley and that oh he doesn't deserve another year or this or that like this guy brought ASU basketball up from the dead years ago when he got here like this program was nothing he got here he has taken this team to the tournament he's had some phenomenal seasons had this team ranked as high as number three in the nation and they just know how to stay alive dude yeah, like yeah. that is not the case for so many programs like there are a few coaches in the country that i would trust on any given night to be fired up mm-hmm. yeah bobby hurley is the only coach that i have legitimately seen that does not sit for the entire game man does not eat for the entire game his pits are they're dripping man <laughs> like he deserves to get another season for sure at asu and yeah. not only i mean i said this a couple weeks ago but like they said it on the broadcast tonight this team has been so unlucky and i know it's easy to say like oh just this bobby's coach it's not like no they, they, they had a bunch of transfers um come in and hard injuries. to do that injuries and then the covid stuff a couple years ago it's it's a lot of unluckiness and people forget of what what bobby did it should have been three straight tournament appearances if covid didn't cancel that that tournament so you just you you, you got to take a step back and and this is these are the games that you see why people should believe in Bobby like so many teams would have given up weeks ago yeah and yeah. given up after three or four you know games where you should have won and it sucks but it's a learning experience those games usually don't motivate you they motivate this team yeah. they fight like dogs bro and, and not to mention the fact that like this like Bobby mentioned it when we talked to him. This is a different team than Bobby normally has. They're winning in yeah. different ways. They're relying on their defense, which is super encouraging because you. I feel like you see a lot of times when a coach doesn't have a team that fits their style of play and is different from their norm, they don't know how to cope with that. Bobby, although for as much as we've talked about their struggles to adapt in-game, season to season – he has been incredibly good at adapting. Yeah. Um, and this is this is just the fruits of his labor, I feel like. Um, they've improved every game, and it's it's time. I mean, I'm starting finally starting to believe what it's Shane time. said. It's time. The Pac 12 tournament. This is a team that could su- surprise some people. Telling you, it's the moment that we've all been waiting for is ASU to finally show everybody else what we've seen and just unlock its true potential. But it is also the moment we've all been waiting for because we got the Super Bowl Bowl coming up next Sunday, guys. We've been waiting for it since September. And in honor of the big game, the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 56, is giving new customers 56 to 1 odds on either team. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. If you're not a new customer, you can experience Super Bowl 56 with same game parlays. And guys, that's usually my favorite when you can combine some some overs here, some unders there, maybe a little player props, anytime touchdowns. I know I will sh- for sure have some same game parlays going on that. Give me Joe Shiesty plus four, maybe plus four and a half. But hey, it is what it is. Regardless, if you're taking Joey B or if you're taking the guy on the other side, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use promo code PHNX. Get 56 to 1 odds on either team. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code PHNX at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 56. 21 plus Arizona only gambling prom call 1 800 next step. New customers only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for. Details. Sorry, I've been looking at my computer this whole time. I've got some. Uh, I got a Bobby clip that I'll be. Um, I'll let you know when it's ready. Uh, ooh, live ooh. from DFA right now. I'm in. Disney. Do we have? Speaking of Bobby, do we have the Bobby Hurley mood board? Oh, we do. Ready to I go because yes. I, I need. I need me some Hurley moods. Where are we at, boys? A seven. That's the only one where he's smiling. <laughs> I'm just happy. I'm one, man. I'm beside myself. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm a one with a little bit of seven. There's just there's not one that truly is just like pure unbridled excitement. Mm. And that's what I need. Um, unbridled excitement. Big words. Oh, wow. Big words. That's a wordle. Hey, it's not five letters, but it should be. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, seven is the only one where I'm just I'm just like content. I'm just I because I think after tonight, I'll get home. <laughs> and that comment <laughs> oh, oh jesus um i'll get home tonight and once the adrenaline is worn off a little bit got a long drive home yeah i'll just sit in my bed staring up at the ceiling in the dark with a smile on my face because i am happy that asu pulled uh-huh. off the upset of the season chat to chime in let us know what you're feeling uh squirrel says he's feeling a nine rick flair Woo! 
And I agree. Can I get two claps on a Ric Flair? <laughs> Woo! That was hot. That was so hot. I was really happy that y'all did that because that was not <laughs> planned. Uh, well, why don't we go to Bobby, huh? Yeah, let's yeah, do let's it. Let's get it. Yeah, it's great for them. It's great for everybody. You know, the students, you know, what all of us have been through for, for two years. It's good to for everyone to enjoy a good moment. And it was, uh, it was, it was exciting to see that and got to, uh, you know, fist pump a number of students and, and see them. They were terrific. The crowd was fantastic throughout the whole game. And they, you know, their energy never dropped throughout any of the overtimes. They just were, it was a fun game to, uh, to obviously be a part of. I'm glad they could enjoy it as well. He's not wrong. No. The energy was there. DFA needed this team needed to feel like someone was behind them. And they got that tonight. Yeah, and they deserved that. They've been deserved. They've been deserving of that for so 100%. damn yeah. long. Um the thing that really sucks is you know a lot of fans I would assume are watching from a game cast or getting updates and have bailed on this team and seeing, you know, like the USC game, to, the first time they played USC, for example, you see the final score, you're like, oh, USC got blown out again. It's not what happened. No, you, you, it's tail of two halves. Yeah. Um, speaking of tail of two halves, that was the original <laughs> loss post game thumbnail title. And then I had to make four of them tonight. Um, one about <laughs> single overtime, one about double, one about triple, one about regulation. And they didn't need a damn didn't one. Didn't need a damn one. Yeah, and it baby. feels fucking yeah, baby. good. My God, guys, they did it. They did it. Hurley mentioned the energy. He mentioned just the crowd in general. Let's see. We've got video of them storming the court. Let's see what that looks like from. Uh... Unlucky. They, they single-handedly brought life back into Tempe, guys. We were joking that. The, the ASU was so unlucky that when they were up six with a minute to go, the lights were going to go out again yeah. <laughs> and they were going to have to postpone the game. And I'm just so happy that that didn't happen. There were so many chances where it went in and out, but it went both ways. US, US UCLA was on the bad end tonight, finally, of some bad bounces. Yeah. But the going back to resiliency, what wasn't a bad bounce was – the kickball violation DJ Horn caused right yep. after he almost yes. got a backcourt violation for almost the same thing. Yep. Oh, it feels so damn good to win, boys. Dude, defense was like and, and like we've said ASU's defense is, is great, right? Yeah. Like that, that hasn't been something that we've slept on or that, you know, nationally I don't think has been slept on. But to put it in perspective, Johnny Juzang, one of the nation's best players, did not score in any of the overtimes and he fouled out. I think he missed eight, eight straight. straight eight straight shots. Give me another defense that could do that to an elite scorer like him. Pac-12 player of the year, arguably. Yeah. At least, especially before the season. And first round pick in the NBA draft. Yeah, and and this is what this is what ASU does. This is this is Bobby talked about it, hanging your hat on the defense, and that's exactly what they've done. They finally got the offense to match it, and it just it was a long time coming. Speaking of offense, good. we got another uh, another clip from the game. Kamani Lawrence, this is and one. Just listen to the crowd in this. You can it. really feel the environment. And and you notice the upper bowl not filled out at all. No. And it was still so loud. Shout out to the 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 children yeah. on the sideline with their Shout shirts out on. To them boys. The entire last five minutes in regular in overtime as well. Uh, they were hyping people up. The resembled Bobby Hurley a little bit. Yeah. Oh if, yeah. If you didn't watch the game, there was like four little shirtless, like ten Munchkins. year olds. Yeah. On the front, on the sitting court side, Pumping they their were just, arms, getting the crowd fired up. If, I love that from Bobby too. Man, he was oh, that so was in such it. an awesome moment. So in it. Like I can't think of another college. Like yes, there are beloved college coaches around the nation, and I know I'm beating it right now. But like Bobby loves this team, dude. He Bobby loves the, loves game. the program so much. That's just I feel like that's his brothers like that too. That's just the Hurleys. Yeah. Like they're they their blood runs hot. And it's oh, just yeah. it's, it's so it's basketball, man. awesome to have a coach. And, like an that. evident moment of who Hurley is as a person is you know, Marion took some bad shots tonight, yeah. as he yeah. does, just trying to get back. That's how kind of how he is, and you live and die by his bad shots. Um, the one where he at the end of regulation, I think, when he tried to win the game, um, 
Bobby, instead of pulling him, he got the hook a couple times in regulation, but instead of pulling him, I believe he played every single minute except for some switches on offensive defense. Instead of pulling him, he took him aside and was like, hey, man, more time on the clock, whatever he said. And he started and he gave him confidence to hit a three that really helped this team. Yeah. And that's just kind of who Bobby is as a person, and that's how much he believes in his players. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, I mean, you compare that to, to UCLA, and you had their coach who after – forget who it was, but he threw that ball and that inbound play, threw it straight out of bounds, yep. and he was lighting his player up. And, I mean, UCLA is obviously a great team, a little fraudulent, but a great team. Not fraudulent. And, and they, they – but there's a difference. in kind of, You get your players to play for you mm-hmm. when you're a coach like Bobby. Um, and it's just – it just is so good to see. Saul said it best. Mick Cronin is a Karen. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. He's got like you said it. He he's has a tiny, a, a, he's a, a Napoleon tiny complex. Yeah, he's a little, little angry elf. <laughs> he's an angry elf. He's an angry elf. He's a blue angry elf. I'll say it to his face. <laughs> Will you? Me. Yeah. What is he gonna slap me in the face? He can't reach. Okay, let's wow. talk about coach violence right now. I think mean, UCLA him towards me. Okay. UCLA has a, has had enough violations <laughs> over the last couple days. Mac ETN, where you at, boy? Ooh. Dear God. Currently oh. sitting, hopefully, in a holding cell somewhere in Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, do we got a lyric of the game? Oh, we do. And I'm stoked for this one because I feel like I'm going to sing, obviously. This is our first win in a while. Um, first winning post game show in a while. I feel like we might get a copyright violation for how this beautiful I'm about accurate. to sing. Oh, I'm ready. Uh, this is the lyric of the game. Um, this comes from one of my favorite artists. This is a older song, King Cruel. I believe he's Australian, has a weird little twang to his accent. Same old Bobby, same old beat. <laughs> that was Can we get hot. it one more time? Same old Bobby, same old beat. It's the start of the song, so there's nothing really going after that. But the reason why I made this lyric of the game is because it made it, my life a little bit easier, guys. <laughs> I made this with about five minutes to go in regulation, and I was like, regardless of what happens, this is what the lyric of the game should be. Because either they do what Bobby's been doing for years since he's taken a hold of this program and beating big, good opponents in games they shouldn't be in, yeah. or this team's going to get effed again and they're gonna fall after such a hard fight and it's gonna be the same old bobby loss as we've seen in the last couple of weeks thankfully it was the more positive one so that's the lyric of the game can you just show i just want to see that lyric or not the lyric i just want to see the graphic one more time of you uh okay is there a reason why your mouth is just like black you don't have like teeth so I've tried to do that, yeah. and it looks it's even more terrifying. <laughs> you don't sure? want to see that. It looks like you just ate an entire pound package of black licorice. Yeah, it well, gives I, me like like we like the me energies. You know those little characters. Yeah, the Wii? it yeah. gives me that just a flat black circle on the face. Yeah, that's what we need in this office. A, a we? We? I have a we. Oh, Mario yeah, Kart? yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I wish it wasn't eleven thirty. I'm ready to go to the bars Saturday, after this, though. man. I'm ready to go after that. I'm wired. You would have swore that I just dropped 20 on UCLA. We going to Old Town? Yeah. I'm not not down, Mill. Oh, we going to Mill? I'm not not down. Anybody going to Mill? Anyone getting crazy? Anyone want to meet us on this? What a great night, boys! What a night! What what a a great night. night. Listen, listen, guys. The, the fun doesn't it it doesn't end here. Right? <sighs> not just for us, for everybody watching, for everybody that's gonna go listen. If you want this amazing reactionary content, if you want just great content, not only from us, but from quite literally everybody at PHNX, all you got to do is become a PHNX member. Unlock an entire world of Arizona sports coverage you never even imagined possible. Head to go PHNX.com today and become a member of the family. You'll get either a free t-shirt from the PHNX locker or your first month for just 50 cents just for signing up. Still got a great deal going on sun shirts, 20% off those sun shirts for members only. So go sign up, be a member, go cop some phenomenal merch, the PHNX uh, Phoenix Rising shirts. Those are also pretty good. Heat. Go follow them. Go follow them on social. That's the the newest channel that we got going. Just got some really great stuff uh, for members. So don't be afraid to go online and, and hang out with us in the discord is popping tonight. Uh, my guy, Josh was in there sweating it out with me. It got a little scary at the end, but AC pulls through baby. We also got some um, stuff from Marion and some more stuff from Bobby, I believe coming in a little bit. So Ooh. watch out for that. Ooh. Can I give you a little piece of, uh, of history? Let's hear it. Um, they mentioned this during the broadcast, so I'm not like some massive historian, um, but they were, they, they, they're not just the second 
rank, unranked team in Division One basketball history to beat an AP top five team in three or more overtimes. The only other one was Canisius College. Shout out Buffalo. Um, hmm. Canisius College over number two North Carolina State in 1956. Wow. 1956. That was a 4-0-T game. What was happening in 1956, Sean? Um, Any good like stats? the civil rights movement? Okay, not... <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> you... I, I wanted like the invention of the first supercomputer. Um, oh, that definitely came way later. Earlier, I think. The Cold War? Really? Yeah. Let's look it up. Of the first supercomputer? Were we? Which world war were we in then? Or were those over? That was, it was they were over for about a decade and a half. <laughs> Listen, we were man, in the Cold War. At that I'm not point. a history guy, but I will tell you this: this win, 1964, not 19, far off. Yeah, you were way Elvis off. Elvis Presley entered the United States music charts for the first time with Heartbreak Hotel. So it was the genesis of the King of Rock. Listen, we're talking history, right? Where does this rank in terms of ASU basketball history? That's what David knows this. That was the 60s, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> David's coming for you. ASU Valid. education, baby. <laughs> What's up, bro? Hey, where, some people go to college. List? Some people go to Arizona State. Very true. Mm. Very, very true. Well, David's the one that is actually getting us this footage right now. Shout out you, David. Um, do we want to get into the Marion clip? Let's get into the Marion clip. We got it. You know, there's been a lot of games this season where uh, it was – down to, you know, two, three plays where we could have won and, you know, we've just been building, you know, that all that right there is just build character for games like this, you know, and, you know, hopefully we're going to build off of this game and, you know, get on the run and get going. Momentum. That's all it is, man. Momentum. Something this team has not been able to have, man. Confidence. I mean, not that they've necessarily ever lacked confidence, but now to actually see that, like, confidence yeah, be matched with, like, production yeah um i feel like this is a team this is this is a team because like if this was co if this team was coached by anybody else i'd be like well watch out for a letdown game against u of a but we know that bobby is not that kind of coach he's not going to let his players no. get too high yeah so the fact that they have this confidence and bobby is going to keep them on like level level headed u of a has to take asu seriously i'm not going to sit here and predict a win but they have to take them seriously yeah, I mean, if, if anything, before this game, U of A saw when the Sun Devils went to McHale that they had to take him seriously. Yeah. Because yeah. ASU was very close to winning there, too. Yeah. If it weren't for that last seven minutes, ASU wins that game. Is this the best 7-13 and team you've seen? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I, I mean, think about the games that they've lost. Like, A, no team, especially in this conference, has had a stretch of games like this. Yeah, like, it, 2002. Like, these, these three, three ranked teams – they haven't had that like a heartbreaking loss that they had to UCR. So like they haven't had like the COVID delays. Their arena failed them and have to cancel a game that could have been really crucial to their momentum at that point with the Florida State, Florida A and M game. Um, like so they've gone through a lot. Um, and they've improved every game. Like I said. And they finally got to this point. So I, I yeah I think it's probably the best. Let me take you back a little bit. Remember when we were talking about the gauntlet? Yeah yeah yeah. What would you have said if I had told you that ASU beats UCLA after competing in against U of A and USC? I would have laughed in your face. Yeah, <laughs> so, like that's sounds exactly what's been happening this whole year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, hand up, like hand up. I, I admittedly doubted this team, and I. It's fair. It's fair. I'm not. I'm not blaming anybody that's ever doubted this team. I'm blaming the people that don't believe that this team is capable of stuff like this. Yeah, because it's clear. I've yeah, been, and I'm. Also, not here for anybody. Yes, UCLA did not play well tonight, but do not call them frauds. They are 100% a top-tier team. This is a team that returned, I feel like, just about everybody from making it to the Final Four last year. Like, no, we've heard this time and again. Oh, ASU, you know, you against USC. Oh, USC shot bad. U of A as well. Yeah. No, this team... Plays defense. defense. This plays like phenomenal defense. Yeah. In not only in the con conference but nationally. If you look what they've been able to do in terms of holding some of these top tier scoring teams to these like point totals, eighty four points for a top three team, and that was in three overtimes. Yeah, I call I called them fraudulent earlier, but a fraudulent UCLA team is still a top ten team in the country. Yeah. Like ASU handled. And like they didn't dominate them, but they mm -hmm. took care of 
what is after they're going to be yeah. probably top 15 after these rankings come out because this they're is definitely two straight losses for the them. Top 10, yeah. Yeah. But this is a ranked team. This is a team that is going to threaten that, that, that probably will has a very good chance of winning the Pac-12 and has a very good chance of making the splash in the tournament. And ASU show that they are mm-hmm. capable of competing with them for seven quarters yeah. of basketball. Uh, like so, as I said, I mean. David is there at the post game. Um, he said Marion also said he's been dealing with a wrist injury this year since game two. Tried to play through, but finally went into medical trainers after the Oregon game. That's something that's really interesting, wow. and maybe, hopefully, you know, maybe that's what was causing it. Yeah, I, I don't want to say that for sure, but that would be nice if this was the normalcy now. Yeah, and I mean, even <laughs> if it wasn't like the actual injury, getting through it, there's always the, the possibility that he was trying to overcompensate for yeah. the fact that he was injured or something like that. Um, any yep. of that, you can get David you said, head. finally feeling good. So that is huge. That is that is massive. Even like, if he's just hey, telling himself that. Even if he's just telling himself we, we that. We said it. If Marion gets hot, if Marion can play out. consistently, watch the fuck out. This team is Marian going the to bench tonight, be yep. deadly. That's and I, that's where I think he should be. But um, I don't like that. It's not, not a, a slight to him. That no. kind of spark plug coming off the bench. And we talked about it earlier in the year. It's about who finishes the game. Mm-hmm. And he finished the game. He played the majority of the three overtimes and yeah. was big in them. Yeah. You know, I mean, watch this was just not, not just for Marion guys, but like I, I, Alonzo Gaffney, Jay Heath, Luther Muhammad, guys that like you don't hear their names so often, like pounding the stat sheet night after night. But these are all guys that contributed massively tonight in some way and in, in some form. There was a there was I mean, Gaffney obviously had a couple big blocks. He had two blocks tonight, one reaching from behind, one coming over. Enoch had a big block tonight. Um, there were some big man rebounds, yeah. not just from big men, but DJ man. Horn, yeah. huge rebound. Mari on a couple big rebounds, uh, fighting for the ball. It, I mean, it was a complete win, and yeah. it was great. And how often do you see – like, this is the first time I felt like throughout an entire game you saw an ASU team do things like Mari and Euro stepping through people and dumping it off to somebody. Um, Jalen's and one dunk, well, even though he missed a free throw, but yeah. like – that you don't you haven't seen that from this ASU team much this this year and they did it throughout the game and that is exciting to see their offense actually look like a division 1 power 5 offense and not everyone just standing around taking a bad shot at the end of the shot yeah. clock it feels really it looks really good yeah a beautiful game a beautiful story is for some beautiful itself. boys for some beautiful, beautiful boys. boys everyone light skin face ready real quick I was calling them beautiful boys. Yeah, well, we're beautiful boys too. Oh man, <laughs> Saul's gonna Saul's clipping that. I already oh, know God. Saul's clipping it. But guys, before we get out of here, where what does Monday look like? Uh, it better be loud as fuck. Fest. It better be super loud. Uh, these this team deserves it, and they showed you why they deserve a packed house at DFA on Monday. Uh, obviously, you will be there. It's it's gonna be a great environment. Uh, I would be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked if ASU comes out a little flat in terms of shooting. I would be shocked if they don't bring 40 minutes of full intensity. Yeah, I would agree. I, I mean, yeah, no, I expect the same thing. This is a kind of game that, who, regardless of who wins, I feel like it's going to be like this is going to it's going to be a kind of game where at the end someone's having the foul to try and hope for some missed free throws and get a win. Like this is going to be a, a another gritty fest. game. Yeah, um, and I, I feel like this is going to feel like even more than the last game. An ASU U of A rivalry game. Yeah, and and I I have to the nine four two crew is gonna ball out. This is just gonna, it's gonna be like the, just it's gonna be the kind of game that this team can play. Like yeah. I, that's, I don't know how else to put it. And yeah. and Mark says that bullshit Stanford game and talking about the fouls and whatever. Uh, but I, I, like this this game, it's not big because they beat a top three team. Like it's no. gonna help them in the tournament. It doesn't matter. They're not getting in with the resume as we've said. Uh, this game, the other, the games in the past, the lo- win loss doesn't matter. They played hard in those games, and now you're starting to see it all come, come together. Doesn't matter what the record is. Doesn't matter if they're under 500. All that matters is that they are playing their best basketball right now. And this is when they need to be exactly. Yeah. Especially if they this win, if they win on Monday, what that could do for their momentum and confidence going into the Pac-12 tourney. We've said wild things happen in Vegas, but. They will have knocked out two of the best teams in the Pac-12 and in the country 
um, in a span of three days. And then you get a road trip to the Pacific Northwest for at Washington, at Washington State, two very winnable games, even though Washington State playing good basketball and obviously held the Sun Devils 29 points, completely different team yeah. now. Washington State um, trying to play their way into the tourney. You get Oregon and Oregon State at home, and then Colorado at Colorado, at Utah, and then at home against Stanford and Cal to finish the schedule. And guys, I know this is a sore subject, they beat U of A, go on a little bit of a win streak, badly come back to the Pac-12 tournament. It, I think mm, I don't want to say no outright because I don't like I don't know him, so I don't really I can't say what motivates him. Obviously, there's great incentive for him not to play. He's got a lot on the line. But if this team's still playing like this and they win the majority of their games and they're hot going into the tournament. It, the, I, I can promise you the guys on the team are going to be vouching for him to come back because if Bagley's back, you want to talk about a team that can make a splash in the Pac-12 tournament. Um, so I, I wouldn't put it out of the question. I think it's, I think it's possible for sure. I think he's just got a lot of people in his ear. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, which we'll learn a lot about him. Reasonably so. I mean, yeah, I, got I, like an older I said, brother dealing with injuries. I would not blame him in the slightest not if he chose all. not to. Um, that's a business decision that's well but beyond any of us. Also, can't awesome. speculate could actually yeah. be a knee injury. So you just that, don't that's just don't know. Regardless, there's a lot of fun basketball left for ASU. If you're interested in it, if you enjoyed the show, like, subscribe, wherever you get your podcasts. Go to YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Twitter, go to YouTube, subscribe. Turn those notifications on because we're going live um, or doing podcasts at least five days out of the week, sometimes more. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. You can follow the show if you enjoyed your time here with us on social at PHNX underscore Sun Devils. You can follow me on Twitter at Anthony underscore Totri. Sean, where can the peeps follow you? At Sean underscore DePaz. And can I just say this one Whoa, last no time? No lights can face when you said that? There it is. <laughs> at Sean underscore DePaz. The Arizona State Sun Devils just beat the number three ranked UCLA Bruins. Yeah, they did. Behind Marion Jackson's 24 Behind points. Behind Marion. You want to talk about, shout out PHNX Coyotes, uh, Wheel of Fantasy. That sounds like <laughs> Dude. that sounds like some straight Wheel of Fantasy shit. That literally sounds like something. I'm, I feel like I'm going to wake up. Like, yeah, oh, no. Is, like This is my dream. <laughs> the picture, wake up with the a picture. Dub. Yeah. God, it feels so nice, guys. You can follow me at Shane Deef. Oh, my God. If you enjoyed it, catch us Monday night, baby. We'll be back. We are signed! Woo!